Aqua yes. Marina. Yes. I mean, who doesn't like a bit of Marina? Well, obviously Troy Tempest. And uh, Chris Dale seems to get along with her as they voyage across yeah. the Andiverse for the randomizer. Um, That's right. But she can be a bit terse at times, as we've regularly but So can Chris, to be fair. Yeah, that, that is fair, yeah. Uh, but there is <laughs> one person who really wasn't much of a fan of Marina at all. And that person may surprise you. Uh, oh. Marina, in case you don't know, in case you're not a Stingray fan. I mean, why are you listening if you're not a Stingray fan? But maybe you don't. Uh, Marina was the mysterious and beautiful wo- woman from under the sea who came to Troy Tempest's rescue in the very first episode of Stingray. She subsequently drew- joined the crew of Stingray uh, and took part in many adventures. Obviously, it's not very difficult to get into the World Aquanaut Security Patrol. Just be a random mermaid and you'll let in, no problem. <laughs> well, that's my motto for life, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's worked well for you so far. Anyway, it has. as Stingray progressed, she seemed to appear less and less. Of course, one famous trait that Marina possessed, besides the ability to breathe underwater with apparent immunity to pressure and temperature, mm-hmm. was her inability to speak. Yes. Now, it was her muteness that made her the bane of the life of director Alan Patillo. Although oh. Alan thought that the puppet looked fantastic... He found her silence to be a bit of a dramatic hindrance rather than an opportunity yeah. to tell stories that highlighted her uh, her disability, should we say. Mm-hmm. Certainly, uh, the struggle for the APF filmmakers was to tell an exciting story with puppet characters who were very limited in their ability to move and express themselves. So removing the option to have a character speak was one barrier too many for Alan Patillo. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Now, years later, uh, in an interview, which uh, you may see in the upcoming uh, network Blu-ray, previously unseen footage, I say. Uh, mm-hmm. He maintained that the character was, in his words, unsuccessful. Ouch! So perhaps this is why Marina became less and less involved in episodes uh, from later on in the production order. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe Alan had so much influence that he just said, I'll just get rid of her. But despite this, and despite Alan's protestations, Marina yeah. still remains a very popular character. Yeah, yeah. Uh, according to some scripts in the Anderson Entertainment Stingray adaptations, uh, she has recently been played by Raquel Welsh, would you believe? Say what? <laughs> no, that's just, <laughs> that's Nick Briggs' little gag. He puts uh, guest Very stars good. playing Marina in the audio scripts, because uh, obviously excellent. they're not really there. Uh, no, well, no, I mean, uh, of course, they're, they're there playing her silently. Uh, but, uh, Posterons, what do you think about Marina's silence? Was it a successful part of the Stingray formula, or did it slow down the drama? We'd love to know your thoughts. Email us podcast at jerryanson.com, or if you're watching the video on YouTube, comment below this very video with your thoughts. Um, That is interesting. And as I've said, that information and more are available in the uh, fantastic Stingray documentary on the upcoming network, Blu-ray, which is called We Are About to Launch Stingray. Obviously, because it it's about the you know the <laughs> genesis of Stingray. It's a fantastic doc, may I add. Chris has done amazing work on that, uh, and so much new, previously unseen archive material with uh, with people who are no longer with us. So, yeah, Great. worth worth the price of the disc alone for that. Yeah, I should imagine so. Uh, yes. But what do you think about mute characters, Richard James? Well, now was a reason ever given for her not being able to speak? Uh, yes, she'd had her uh, ability to speak taken away, I believe, uh, possibly by Titan or some other uh, undersea right. fiend. Was it, is it yeah. an entire race, possibly, that had it taken away? Uh, I, right. I can't remember where, where it was explained. Again, I'm showing myself up to be um, yeah, Anderson now, Ignoramus once again. If we're... <laughs> and and Ramos. And did, uh, did we ever meet? Uh, did we ever meet others of her of her race? Met her father. Yeah. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. Uh, right. And, uh, uh, but and he was able course, to speak. Well, there was the the audio version, uh, the audio story, the mini album. Marina speaks yeah. where she spoke. Right. 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 Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not a great way, is it, to to forward the narrative having a, having a, a character that can't speak. It's a, I can imagine that you might start off that way, but how interesting and exciting an episode would it be when she regra- regained the power to speak? Absolutely. Or if it was sort of temporary and fleeting. Yes, and were, yes. Yeah, that That's would be right. great. Why didn't they yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs>